selection. Artificial selection. Yes. Okay. And I also gave you a homework, I believe. Yes, sir. Which was? You gave a question about how did the birds of the Galapagos evolve their beaks to stay survive. No. Yes. Okay. Right. Right. So, um, let's let's start with a quick recap of the last class, a summary. Okay, Sahel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then we'll go to the homework part. Yeah. Uh, we wrote about artificial selection and some examples of it. We wrote mm -hmm. that the process of artificially selecting a gene or a phenotype of a particular plant or animal species over multiple generations by humans, leads, which leads to uh, creation of new breeds, is known as artificial selection. Yes. And the examples for it are plants for agriculture, such as rice, wheat, corn, maize, barley, etc. And yeah. then flowers uh, during horticulture. And then we discuss about horticulture a bit. And then uh, different animals as well, such as white skin, cats. white bird cats, etc. Yeah, cats and dogs in general. White fur was just an example I gave you, yeah. just a trait. Yeah. yeah. Then we talked about natural selection, uh, where we talked about industrial melanize, uh, melanization of moth, uh -huh. which we, uh, and the pre-industrial era in 1850s, where the white colored winged moths were able to survive more because there was less pollution in the environment and they could uh, camouflage easily on the white, uh, white bark uh, trees, trunks, and they could survive due to natural selection. But after the inter industrialization, uh, there was more pollution and the bugs became darker and hence the brown or dark colored wing moths were able to survive and this was due to natural selection. Yeah, when we say were able to survive, what do we mean by that? Were they, basically they were less they predated, predated, right? Predated, right. Yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah. Then we Continue. talked about adaptive radiation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, you explained about Darwin's finches of Galapagos, where the beaks of the different birds, uh, not different birds, the same birds, changed over a few, uh, long time. Uh, long time. Uh, the previous birds were uh, having long and uh, wider beaks. We are used no, to. No, 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 Sahel. It's, there's no concept of previous birds here, right? Because all these different. That's why we call it radiation it is not a change so it's not like that one kind of bird is changing into the other many different beaks are arising from the same common population of seed eating birds so the seed eating one is also there so there is no concept of previous or later you understand all are present oh, at the same sorry. time even the even the older so ones like mean, this there are different types of bird or just one type of bird so there was to begin with there was just one type of bird Okay, now when these birds okay. diverged to different areas where feeding habits were different, like they had to adapt different feeding habits, they also adapted to different beak shapes. And that was the question, how did it happen, which I gave you as a homework. So right. after, after many generations, we saw that instead of just one type of beak population, now we are seeing that there are many types of beak population. You understand? Okay means from yeah. one generation of birds, different types of birds emerge. One population of birds, not one, one generation population. of birds. Okay. Yeah. One population of birds. Yeah. So then we give the question and we have to find the answer. We have to yeah, find so it's, just, it's the same thing. Like there is a common pool of students. You all are in class 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, let's say. After that, you will step out in the world and some will become engineers, some will become doctors, some will become artists, some will become sports persons, some will become, you know, uh, professors and whatever you want to do in life. So it's the same thing. Something is driving you. Here, it's your passion, it's your talents, it's your skills. So what's driving? But it's not like earlier there were just engineers, then doctor evolved from engineers and then artist evolved from you all were one pool in class 12th. You understand that? That from the common pool, you diverged. You radiated into different professions. Does it make sense? Does the analogy help you to understand? Sahel? Yes, sir. And others? 
Yes, sir. Very well. Yes. Then, yeah, I think uh, we, we did these two. And I asked you a question. All of you have prepared the question. Like, did you, could you find any answer? Anyone who could not find any um, concrete answer or is still confused about the question? Who was not present in the last class? Nida, were you present in the last class? Good evening, sir. I was absent. Yes, Samara, you were also absent. So you missed on. Yeah, I was uh, good. Kulsum, Nida, and Samara, I think, right? Nida, were you there? Yes, I was there. Yes, Nidhas. So you have you prepared the answer, Nidha? Can you hear me? Like, are you regretting? Why did you say I was there? No. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, so I ask you all to keep it in a in a typed format. Those who have it in the type format can just send it in the chat directed to me. I can see Arpit has already sent me something. I think it's it's your homework, right, Arpit? Yes. Biology homework, PNG. Okay. So I have Arpit's homework. Okay. Others, please send your answers. So I send mine. You sent yours. Is it a pa Is it the? Uh, is this just two, two, three lines? Five lines. Okay, five lines. Yeah. Sahel. Sahel is sending in points. Okay. <coughs> Fatima Arpet Sahel has. And Nida, what about you? So Maya and Kulsum were absent in the last class. So Fatima, would you like to explain the homework to Kulsum and Samaira? The question was. By the time I'm reading the answers, you, you continue discussing this. Okay. So can you go to that picture? Yes, I can. Yes. Okay, as you can see the alpha beak, uh, alpha bird, which has a larger beak, it was uh, meant to eat. Alpha means the first bird, also number one, two, three, four, because they were not there. So don't use anything which we discussed and is not on the figure, okay? Okay. It yeah. was meant to eat seeds. And the... Uh, the third bird, it was meant to eat insects. As you can see, their beaks are becoming shorter. And um, the last fourth bird is uh, having a more longer and a smaller beak because it had to eat nectar. So Sir asked, how did the beaks change size and shape? which were in the same population, but then still they changed the size and shape. So why? Yes, Kulsum and Samara can also give your opinions. What do you think? Why? More than why, because we know it happened. You know, sometimes why I don't have an answer. The question was how? How do you think this has happened? Can, so we were basically trying to figure out if one bird um, did it by the end of its lifetime or how it happened. So I'm just reading your answers. I'm, I'm reading the last one. Yes, Kulsum and Samara, feel free to discuss. Nida, I have not received your answer yet. Are you there? Can you hear me? You can, you can send it in the chat, pin it in the chat, or you can also discuss by unmuting yourself. I'm expecting something from Kulsum and Samara their viewpoints, how do they think this happened? This part of evolution is called adaptive radiation. So it's not like one bird was the ancestor of the other. We can see all these birds together on the island. So how do you think it has happened?
But, uh, sir, I think it's because of the food they eat. Yes, exactly. You are perfectly correct that it's because of the food they eat. So if we start eating different kind of foods, it's not like our beak will turn into different thing, different shapes, right? So beak, to, to adapt or to eat that food better, beak is required. So beak is the tool, okay? Now tool decides how well you can do the work, but work does not, work cannot change a tool. It's a simple. So if you have to open a screw, uh, you need a screwdriver. If you have pliers, it's a difficult job. But just because you have a screw to open, your pliers will not turn into screwdriver, right? You need a screwdriver to do that work better. So of course, here the beaks are helping them to eat or to adapt in the given environment better. But the question was, how do you think it's happening over time? What are the logical ways by which it can happen or, or, or a logical way? It can also be just one logical way. So I'm reading the answers and I have also almost read all the answers. Just reading the last one. So I have a doubt to propose, like I have a question. And doubt yes, sir, please, please. Yeah. Like if there's a bodybuilder, I'm like a beginner who is trying to lift some weights, say 20, mm -hmm. pound, 20 kgs, and he's not mm -hmm. able to do that. But mm -hmm. through persistence and continuous uh, hard work, he's mm -hmm. able to lift it. And the mm -hmm. muscle grows through that. For example, so on the first day, the muscle is able to uh, lift only 5 kgs. Mm -hmm. But throughout the week, if he practices, he's able to uh, lift 20 kgs or 30 kgs. Right? Mm -hmm. Maybe this, yes. Yes. that is due to the uh, hormones and everything, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, right. And the right. muscle development. Correct. So maybe Correct. due to the same reason. So you think that they were also trying to? So muscles are malleable. We can understand muscles. We can. They can. But or you could um, say about the stretching of bones. Example: If you're a, a gymnast or a basketball player, which is a better example, and you're playing, mm -hmm. uh, you're a short kid, and you're playing basketball, and you're you're at the age of growing up, and then after continuous playing of basketball your height increases yes because that's again um, the reason there is because uh, height is affected or regulated by both genetics and environmental factors so do you think that the same kind of thing is happening in the case I'm of asking, beak? that's my question is that possible that here is not possible for a beak per se because beak is a dead tissue most okay. of the beak is dead, right? So in case of high, increasing of height or the muscles you're saying, these are live tissues. So the kind of nutrition we, we give them or the kind of activity do we do can affect it. It's, it's not like they are totally dead. So what you're saying is not completely absurd. It actually makes sense in the light of evolution. But here, then um, I have to, I have one question, a counter question. So like you said, Gymnasts have flexible body. A basketball player can shoot up its height and a bodybuilder can build muscles. But after that bodybuilder, that gymnast or that basketball player dies, can it pass on that trait to the kids? Like, do you think that the kid of a bodybuilder will be a bodybuilder right from the beginning? No, no sir, it's required. No, right, sir? Right, sir. So, but here we are seeing that over the time, even the kids of these finches have the same beak that the parents had. So they are able to pass that on. It's not like every kid is born like a seed eating bird. And then with practice and hard work and dedication for eating nectar, they are changing their beak over time. So that's one difference, right? right. So that's one, that's one. But the thought process was very, very uh, brilliant to begin with, very beautiful, but just because it was wrong, I think now we can think of a right answer. And I also gave you a hint. So I read all the answers and none of it answers the question actually. All of you are beating around the bush and Arpit has beated around the bush a little quite uh, like the most in a most brilliant way. He has he, he's beating around the bush and also the bushes which are around that bush. So uh, that's a good that's a good thing to see. But no one answers. And Fatima has used a very important point. I, 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 don't, I, I don't know if she understands it. So you are saying that 
uh, anthropogenic selection. Anthropogenic selection is artificial selection only. It is called fast natural selection because we are artificially doing it. We making rice varieties is an anthropogenic selection. Okay, Fatima, just you brought this word forward. So I'm anything which is anthro. The word anthro is related to human. Anthropocentric view, human humanitarian view. It means humanitarian view. The era which we are currently living in. In what what era did dinosaurs lived in? Triassic, Jurassic. You must have heard of these words, right? Jurassic, of course. Jurassic Park is the most. Yeah, so dinosaurs used to live in Jurassic era, Jurassic period. Now, the period which we are currently living in, scientists call it Anthropocene, the era of humans. So we are the most developed and the most influential species on the planet. So we are actually dominating the planet. So we it's called Anthropocene. Anthropology is the study of human activities and it affects on the, the planet, the uh, world, etc. Okay, so anthropogenic selection is nothing but fast natural selection that's driven by a human. But that does not answer why, how. Um, but all of you have touched a point. Not, uh, if not all of you, then I think uh, Fatima is saying it's, it is because of inbuilt variations. Yes, there is, there is no variation which is inbuilt. Variations arise over time. If there was an inbuilt variation, what do we mean by in the word inbuilt and variation are two opposite things. So some things are inbuilt, like you cannot change it. It's inbuilt. Okay, like our brain is an inbuilt thing. So we have a brain size that's inbuilt. Variation is differences. So something which can be changed, which is not very hardwired. So, but you are, I think you are going towards the right direction. Sahel has used a point called, he, he's, he said, um, beaks of the birds changed due to evolving genetics, but it's a blanket statement. A blanket statement is which, the, uh, which is not incorrect, which, but which is containing the correct answer within it, which is also not the answer, okay? So, yes, it's like a blanket within which the answer lies. So anyone would like to uncover the blanket and go deeper or then I will start. Uh, could you say his statement again? What, what, could I say what again? What Sahel said. Sahel said that beaks of the birds changed due to evolving genetics. Okay. So evolving genetics this whole statement is a blanket statement. So it's like uh, Indians have diverse culture, correct. But it's not giving any answer about what culture do Indians have, what are we talking about, how many cultures, or the differences between the cultures, nothing. It just is a blanket statement. Humans are evolved species, blanket statement. So similarly, this is a blanket statement. Anyone got any idea? I think you all know the answer. Maybe some of you are not able to articulate it properly. I will get to know. Once I'll give the answer, you will say like, oh, yes, yes, yes. So you all understand that there was one common population, let's say population A. Most of, so this population was a seed eating bird because seeds were available everywhere where finches evolved. Then these finches, this population. So subpopulation went to different geographical areas where it was not just seeds. So there was also seeds. So those who migrated from seed eating population to another seed eating region, they will not have much change, right? Yes or no? Yes. But those who went to the region where insects were the major food or nectar was the major food, or uh, anything else was the major food, you will see a change there. Now, how change happens, how organisms evolve, this mechanism will just uh, shed light to it. It happens the same for every organism. So what happens is there are random mutations happening in a population, right? Evolution is a population phenomenon. So when the first, let's say first, when these seed eating 
population reached to a region where there were insects. So they wanted to be insect eating. So to peck on insects, you need tiny, tiny beaks, smaller beaks. Broader and bigger beaks might not be able to pick every insect with precision. It's the same concept like uh, if you want to pick something very tiny or you, know, you need something that has precision, right? If I ask you to wear cricket gloves or football goalkeeping gloves and pick up a small bead, will you be able to do that? No. No, right? Because you you have like big, big, very wide fingers. So with that, picking up something. But if I ask you to wear cricket gloves and pick up the bat, you will be able to do that, right? Yes, sir. Correct? Make sense? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Or I ask you to pick up the football, you will be able to do that very easily. But if I ask you to wear football gloves and pick a golf ball or a squash ball, that will be slightly, like you will not be that comfortable doing that job. But what happens is when any population is radiating or showing evolution in terms of adaptive radiation, when it reaches another region, first it finds it difficult. So that's called um, the part where they are being challenged. So nature is now challenging these birds that, okay, you are equipped to eat seeds. Now I'm only giving you insects. If you can eat, eat. If you cannot, die. So nature is brutal. Okay, this brutal selection happens. Now within that bird population, all birds are not same. Okay, just like within the moth population, all moths were not same. Some were white, some were dark. Make sense? Yes, sir. And depending on situation, one got selected and the other got eliminated from the nature. Okay. No, Fatima, it's not because of genetic drift. It's a different concept. Genetic drift is different. But here, genetic drift, if happened in this particular phenomena, can help. But evolution does not solely rely on genetic drift. But what happens is, let's say due to mutations or variations that you were talking about. Out of 100 birds, two or three birds had slightly smaller beaks. Just like some humans are taller, some humans are shorter, some humans get this genes mutated or get the dwarfness gene. So they are dwarf, some are super giant. So all these variations exist, right? Yes. Now, because of this variation, those three, four birds that had slightly smaller, not as smaller as insectivorous are, like in just one generation, they will not change into something. But let's say even someone has slightly smaller beak than this that those three, four birds will be at a better advantage, yes or no, in that environment. And they can eat more insects than the seed eating beaks, yes or no? Yes, sir. And they, because they get more nutrition, they will also be better off in terms of their health and their reproductive fitness, yes or no? Yes. And then they will go on along with other birds to give rise to babies. Now, because their genes due to a mutation or variation, allows them to have smaller beaks. Not all, but a proportion of their babies will also have smaller beaks. Yes. Now they will also be better off with respect to their siblings. So over time, who will get less and less food and who will get more and more food? The seed eating birds will get less. Right, because they are not adapting. But those who had variation and now doing better, they will get more and more food. Yes? So over time, one population will become weaker and little uh, like less nutrition and the other will get stronger and more nutrition and will give more progenies. And from that progenies, again, the smaller beaks one will get selected. So the smaller the beak will keep becoming, the better they are, um, uh, the better they can adapt and fit in the new environment where insects, small, small, tiny, tiny insects are the seed, uh, are the food. Make sense to you? Yes, sir. So after 20, 25, 30, 40 generations, you will see just like what happened to beetles, you will see birds with smaller beaks are increasing in population and birds with broader beaks are decreasing in population in that particular region. That's called natural selection. And because there are many such regions, so this is island A, let's say this is island B or another part of island A, or this is... Uh, geographical location C, this is geographical location D, 
E. So in all these different locations, if the feeding habits are very, very different, you will see that even from one common population, many different kind of beak structures can be evolved or naturally selected over time. But all of them will survive, right? Because all of these regions still exist. So after many hundreds of years of this selection happening, if someone like Darwin will go to these islands to explore, he will see what Darwin saw. And he will observe that the same kind of bird with different in their beaks are existing. Make, makes it clear, everyone, everyone understands how it happens. Yes, no? Yes, sir. Yeah. So that is what is meaning by um, genetic, um, what was the word? Cell? Drift. Evolving genetics. Okay. Genetic drift is something slightly different. Genetic drift is where by accident, one population got wiped out. So nothing is wiping out here. You understand, Fatima? Yeah. In genetic drift, the point is there are two kinds of beetles, red and black. Something happened, a stampede or any anything that just randomly killed 99% of the red beetles, only green beetles survived. So that's like a genetic drift. All of a sudden, within one generation, not only one generation, within five minutes, one year, two years, something just changed drastically. That's called genetic drift. That's not happening here. Here it's being selected over time in nature by challenging them. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Everyone, any doubts? Please note down these points. No doubts? Okay. Now, apart from Darwin Finches, now we know that there are other examples. So today we will begin with studying about Australian marsupials. You know what are Australian marsupials? Kangaroo. Kangaroo is one type of marsupial. So Australian marsupial mammals. So they are mammals, but why do we call them marsupial mammals? Because they have pouch in them. So they are pouched mammals. They are called pouched mammals. Now, all of them don't have pouches. Now, active pouches. Kangaroo has a very active pouch still. And kangaroo still uh, nourishes its baby inside the pouch or carries the baby in the pouch. But basically, they are all coming from uh, marsupial mammals. So they are still called marsupials, even if they do not have a pouch, a functional pouch today. Does it make sense? Yes. But we know after all sorts of genetic and uh, ecological and their anatomical studies that there also in marsupials also an adaptive radiation happened. Now, what is this adaptive radiation? So all of you have NCRT with you? Yes, sir. Uh, please come to page number 133. Let me also pull down this figure. Everyone has opened the marsupial radiation diagram. Many of these organisms you have heard of or you know. For example, koala. You know what is a koala? Koala bear? Yeah, I heard of it. Have you any, anyone has seen or have had owned as a kid, a teddy bear? Yes. Teddy bears are made like the, as an animal, teddy bears are basically koala bears. They are not bears because bears look very different. If you know about, if you have seen grizzly bears or other bears, they don't look that cute. Do they? Teddy bears are actually koala bears. Okay, let me take this figure as well. Mm -hmm. Just give me 30 seconds, people.
ओके वेरी वेल सो यू ऑल कैन सी दिस पिक्चर this is the picture i'm talking about can you all see this picture in your book yes yeah. yes ma'am yeah so this is the adaptive radiation of marsupial mammals now you can see here but where are all these animals present majorly only in australia right and what is special about australia which was also applicable to uh, galapagos island what special about australia where is australia some geography class all of a sudden no one knows where is australia on the planet north west near america south something south sir. south east south yeah not south east. right yeah it's it's below the asia asiatic subcontinent right right yeah and it's a secluded australia is a island nation also called a continent nation australia is also a continent and a nation right we call australian subcontinent in which new zealand and australia comes but australia itself is a island a very big island hence it's called a continent and it's also a country so it's quite big now in australia different regions of australia have very different climates you will find forests you will find deserts you will find grasslands you will find beaches you will find mountains everything okay in different regions of the same land mainland surrounded by water so that's why marsupials are found in australia because they could not radiate from that mainland to other regions because they were surrounded by water and none of them are birds so they are all mammals so and none of them were aquatic also so marsupials are not aquatic so they could not go away nowadays we know that all these things are present in various places as well and how do you think that happened we have kangaroos in other parts of the world as well like in many zoos and many sanctuaries up, up outside australia how because we took them there right how many of you know that cheetahs are back in india yes sir we have cheetahs now in india in kuno kuno reserve madhya pradesh cheetahs ex got extinct in india 70 years ago the last cheetah died so the asiatic cheetah was dead so there was no asiatic cheetah left we hunted humans hunted indians i should say hunted all of them okay the britishers and the royal uh, like the the royal families of india the kings and all maharajas they all hunted cheetah down now we have imported a, a, a namibian cheetah cheetah from namibia eight actually eight cheetahs and we have introduced them in madhya pradesh so that's how we actually can transport or export animals from one place to another to introduce them in some new ecosystem where we think they might be useful but we might be wrong as well so we don't know about the cheetahs how they are going to behave now in india and more importantly how are other species going to behave around uh, a species which was not present there but now is introduced as an alien okay so that will be something worth looking forward to anyways coming back to this so that's that's why they could not leave mainland on their own but we know that kangaroo marsupial rat banded anteater tiger cat look at that they are very very different right but if i say that they have radiated from a common pool of animals common population of animals it will be very hard to believe right in the first instant yes but point is it's not like kangaroo and tiger cat are both very close together point is that tiger cats which are in australia are different from tiger cats which are elsewhere so this is what what uh, adaptive radiation in this case means now let me also there is another picture in your ncert which is this one can you see this picture 
this explain a few concepts properly. Now, um, let me place it here and let me make it big. So these are, this picture shows that every Australian marsupial has a placental counterpart. So placental mammals and Australian marsupial mammals, these are uh, basically by placental mammals, I mean those who whose babies are attached with the placenta. You know, our babies are all human babies are also attached to the mother with the placenta. Yes. And what attaches the placenta and the baby together? That cord, what is Umbilical that cord? cord? Umbilical cord. So that thing makes sure that unless and until the baby is completely developed, you cannot just take out the baby out of the womb and make it develop outside, right? So that's why premature deliveries are a problem. And we have to, in order to make the baby survive, we have to incubate them and put drips. They have to be put uh, nutrition and things from outside with drips in their veins, sometimes if required for their development. But normally everything, like every baby should be born when it's completely developed. So that's placental mammals do. Marsupial mammals have this capability that they can just deliver premature babies and then they can develop those in their pouches like kangaroo do. Kangaroo give birth to pre premature babies. These babies will not survive even for a day or few hours if you leave them on their own because they are not mature yet. So they are non-placental okay, at that time. And <clears throat> then they, they keep their babies in the pouches. The, they, they, these are called brooding pouches where they breed, uh, uh, they get nutrition and they become mature and then they come out of the pouches and start living on their own. So for example, marsupial mole is actually coming from a population of placental moles, okay? The numbat, which is the marsupial anteater, comes from the common anteater, which is present everywhere, you know, outside Australia. In Even in Australia, you will find sometimes an anteater and a marsupial anteater. Mouse has marsupial mouse as a, a radiated species, diverged species, you know, cuscus and lemurs, flying phalanges comes from flying squirrels, Tasmanian tiger cat comes from bobcat, Tasmanian wolf comes from the wolf, the common wolves, okay, which are also present in other parts of the world. So does this make sense to you? That adaptive radiation happened in this case as well? And from some common, yes, Arpit, please. Sir, where is sugar gliders pouch located uh, present? Where is? Where this sugar glider pouch, sir, in which it develops the Sugar, uh, you mean the flying phalanges? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so as I said that all marsupial, um, all marsupial mammals do not have active pouches now. Okay. So in case of flying phalanges, um, let me think if they have pouches, but... So the tutorial, if they are like left open, so they will not be able to survive. <laughs> no, those who do not have active pouches now, then they keep their babies close to their body. Okay, they always carry it. Like in case of, I, I don't know if you have seen, but in case of some marsupial rats or also in case of some, um, some squirrel species, the babies which are born are not completely developed. So what happens is they always keep their babies close, like the mothers hold their baby. So babies just hold on to the mother's body, the fur. And wherever mother will go, the baby will just go there because it cannot survive on its own. And you will see that the babies have babies don't have hair. The, even sometimes their eyes are not properly open. So they're not seeing, they cannot see sense or protect themselves or run away from danger. So premature uh, babies can be born in this case. I think sugar gliders do have pouches. I don't, I'm not sure if they keep their babies in it or not, but it will be something worth finding out, okay? 
so i'll do that arpit you also do this and let me know in the next class about sugar flying challenges okay yes let me note it down. yeah but let's write let's write something about it which will make things clear write down um the uh, many of the marsupial australian marsupial mammals many of the australian marsupial mammals which look very different from each other which look very different from each other have have in fact evolved have in fact evolved from a common ancestral population common ancestral population within the australian island continent within the australian island continent so nothing came from the outside okay no ancestor the stock was there only in the island because it could not go out but it could go into different parts of the island where conditions were different so they adapted into different diff kinds so which is a which is an example of adaptive radiation in evolution now let me ask you a conceptual question have you understood two things uh, we studied adaptive radiation and we also studied convergent evolution are these two things clear to you if not then please go back and look at the convergent evolution what does it, that means because i'm going to ask you a question convergent evolution divergent evolution and adaptive radiation is it clear to all of you if not please ask me any number of times but the next question is is based on that and i'll ask that to arpit or i'll ask that to kulsum kulsum are you there Matthew has joined. Good evening, Matthew. Yes, yeah, so good evening. Uh, I'm sorry for me late. I had a meeting with my curry counselor. Okay. You have a meeting with your my curry counselor. Ah, okay. Good to get some curry counseling. Yes. Okay. How did it go? I went pretty good. well, sir. Yeah. Very good. Kulsum, can you hear me? Uh, it's a coincidence i am also going for career counseling today you all should it, it should not be a coincidence it should be a common preposition you all should be going to counselors career counselors and even you know personal counselors we live in a very rapidly changing world so things might affect you very fast just looking at a career and then figuring it out, figuring it out that oh i don't have growth in that career can impact you your plans so it's always good to talk to someone with more experience and who's a little wiser in terms of number of years spent on the planet that's all so you all should go you all should talk to people counseling is what counsel i also counsel you a lot of things in the class but we do not name the class a counseling class it's a biology academic class but does not means we cannot counsel each other right you all should talk to counselors people around you So is it working for you, Fatima, as well? Are you happy getting some counseling in the right direction? Going to go today. Okay, cool. Kulsum, can you hear me? <laughs> is the question. Kulsum cannot hear me. I think. Samira, can you hear me? Yes, sir. So the question will be for you, sadly. <laughs> okay. So no one objected. So I understand everyone understands all these three terms. So Samira, the question is: Others can think about it and write in the chat if you know the answer. The question is: uh, What uh, in in let's say in one area, let's say um, in Australian mainland. So this is this is somewhat what Australia looks like. So let's say there is one population which diverges to different parts. of the island island continent okay and this was one population 
then there was another population of different organisms they also diverged in a similar manner are you understanding samira yes sir then there was a third population i'm using different colors so that it's clear and these also diverged okay so we can see that there is more than one adaptive radiation happening in one region more than one adaptive radiation for for multiple organism populations is happening in one in the same island agree samira yes, what will happen in this case so these niches these ecological regions let's say this is region 1 this is region 2 this is region 3 where these populate this is region 4 and this is region 5 what what is happening in these five regions according to you so uh, i couldn't hear you uh, can you please repeat it again i had to rejoin yes call to my yes i was asking can you hear me because this answer was i was i wanted to ask this this question was for you i wanted to ask this to you so in, uh, uh, suppose in a in a region which is a isolated region like australia if more than one population two or three populations undergo adaptive radiation so it will look something like this right let me draw it a little more clear because colson can also hear me now so let's say there are two three populations there is a black population like this black represents one organism's population blue and red so these are different organisms maybe one is a squirrel uh, other is let's say a bird third is let's say something okay but you understood right let's also take four there are these four are living in the same region now they started adaptive radiation so first for the blue if you will see the blue radiated to let's say three different regions subpopulations then the red also are radiated to three different regions making sense everyone and the green also radiated to three different regions everyone is following yes sir and then the black also radiated to three different regions so these three regions i am now um, so this is region a this is region b and these three regions have different conditions you can pick any condition but they all are coming from this one common pool so multiple adaptive radiations are happening in region a b and c from a common region which i am calling region 0 ground 0 so what do you think is happening in evolution here multiple radiations lead to question mark can anyone think and tell me what's happening here if you know the answer put it in the chat uh, samira can fatima has already given the correct answer congratulations fatima and your reason is also correct very well done was it did you think of it on your own or did you take the help i studied it before ah okay so you took the help that that's but but i think uh, if i would have asked you the question i don't know how many of you would have answered but if you know something it becomes easier that's what knowledge do to you but good you can you you, you remember what you read so that's also your merit answer is correct the reason is also correct others samira can you think what's happening here now to make things easier for you let's say this region a is a swamp area you know what are swamp marshy areas or swampy areas which are flooded with loose ground mud so it's a swampy area b let's say is a grassland area where the diverse and c let's say is um um is a dense forest so you understand then these are different regions so different kind of capabilities will be required to survive in these regions and let's say this ground zero was uh was a 
something neutral so i can do one thing let me take this ground zero as a grassland very easier to understand and many a times this is true in evolution as well and this region b swamp dense forest and a mountain mountainous jungle so mountainous jungle is different from a dense forest because it has a slope also mountains jungles are on the slope right so different kind of vegetation different kind of fruits different kind of adaptations required so now it's a hint now can you think what's happening here yes nida correct answer samira any idea so maybe they went uh, in search of food or something no no they went i'm not asking why they went they went they have adapt they have radiated so now from ground zero they have all these four populations some some subsets of all these are living in region a b and c which is swampy mountainous jungle and a dense forest so what will happen to these populations in their respective regions to all these four populations one thing is they will change and adapt right yes sir but if they are different organisms when they will when they will radiate together when multiple adaptive radiations will happen from one place to another can you appreciate that in these a b and c regions there is something happening which is convergent evolution as well multiple adaptive radiation will lead to convergent evolution yes or no make sense yes sir yes how i give you the answer now justify the answer how 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 i'm saying it's convergent evolution let's say when they were in the grassland the ground zero one was a tiger other was so one was a predator other was a prey one was a, a kind of let's say bat like organism which used which which is a mammal but could fly the other was something else but when they go to swampy region mountainous jungle or dense forest they will need to develop some common characteristics feature right just like they are coming from very different populations but they need something similar to survive in a swamp or in a dense forest yes or no or in a mountainous yes, jungle so ultimately due to multiple adaptive radiations in regions where these radiations will happen will show convergent evolution between organisms okay if i just change one of this and explain you it will be very evidently clear i was not using this let's say one of these regions is a lake a aquatic organism a aquatic region and the example is many mammals reptiles and birds have adapted for water the same so if you look at a whale a penguin and a turtle you will see some common features one is a mammal one is a bird one is a reptile but what is the common feature flippers all three have flippers coming from very very different anatomical structure but all three have flippers yes or no yes so that's an example of convergent evolution for water but all the, these are not found on in the same region so that's you know, we cannot use it as an exact example but i was just explaining it to you so to survive in aquatic uh, water they need some common features okay so write down more than one adaptive radiation that happens in an isolated geographical area more than one adaptive radiation that happens in an isolated geographical area so can we do more than one adaptive radiation 
that happens in an isolated geographical area leads to convergent evolution leads to convergent evolution okay so i'm writing it here multiple adaptive radiations lead convergent evolution in an why i'm saying isolated geographical area because then they will not have any other place to go so the test the challenge will will be the most okay <clears throat> now so all different kinds of all these evidences that we have studied till now and all different types of evolution is everything clear to you anyone has a question anyone is saying something i thought someone so could understood. you explain it again or tell whatever i was i had left the meeting for so i had to rejoin there was some connection problem okay so what part did you miss uh you were writing down the question sir about this no no not this one question i mean this diagram sir and you asked a question about uh yes okay yes. so let let me go to matthew to do this job for me matthew would you like to explain sahel what we just figured out what we discovered well, about basically we came to the conclusion that multiple adaptive radiations lead to a convergent evolution so yeah so uh, what sir gave an example of um, a species in like ground zero uh, which is moved to like uh, i think it's yeah four No, four, not four. Three uh, different habitats: the swampy, mountainous jungle, and Antarctic region. So, um, from this, we understood that um, multiple uh, we see adaptive variation happening in all three areas. So, due to this, it leads to convergent evolution because uh, all three of these areas will need one common um, anatomical uh, structure, which will be there. No, 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 not anatomical structure. Oh, yeah. some functions. some uh, yes some yeah. organs which which will perform similar functions to Function. survive yeah. in these yeah in these their different. anatomies will be very different that's what convergent evolution is yeah yeah it's so yeah. okay yeah so they will have uh, different anatomical function uh, anatomical organs with the same function because of, in all three habitats both swampy mountainous jungle and aquatic region will need a similar set of functions to which are required to survive in them so yes. from that we make made kind of conclusion that multiple adaptive radiations lead to convergent evolution did you understand sir yes sir oh great so which means matthew is very well cap capable of replacing me in the classes i'm very happy great to see that good job matthew thank you sir yeah okay so uh, just to wrap up what matthew said um that if there are these green blue black and red are four populations of four different organisms in one region which we called ground zero region which is a grassland and from there they dive they are radiated to three different regions swampy mountain jungle and aquatic region all four organisms did the same so a subset of all four are now living in these three regions but here for every region in all these four different kind of organisms there will be some common changes that will happen common morphological changes because anatomy is very different right and that is convergent rev uh, evolution right where different organisms come together in the same habitat and develop some similar structures that can give rise to similar functions for example wings of a bat bird and a butterfly or flippers of a turtle whale and a peng uh, um, and a penguin okay makes more sense everyone yes sir so whatever we have studied till now 
I hope you all are convinced that what is evolution and evolution is happening. It's a real thing. It's not just a theoretical concept in biology. And third, what is the right way to understand evolution? What it is and what it is not. Okay. Anyone has any doubt before I go forward and talk about biological evolution, the summary of biological evolution? All these evidences and all these modes of evolution, all these mechanisms of evolution, is it clear? If you have any doubt, any time, please come with your doubts and you can ask me in any class, okay? So for time being, I'm moving forward and I'm going to summarize, okay? Now, we understand that evolution happens by natural selection. Everyone with me, we are on the same page. Everyone say yes, if you understand yes. this. Cool, yes. no doubt. Yeah. Okay. Now, in a true, like if, if, if I say, it's very easy to understand natural selection in terms of multicellular higher organisms because we have been taking example of all higher organisms till now. But if remember at the beginning of the chapter, the first question that we proposed was, how did the first living system came into existence, right? And the first living system would have been a unicellular organism. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Now, the question is, do you think that all these rules that we have studied, taking example from the current world, where we have studied dinosaurs, fossils of dinosaurs, we have studied Darwin finches, we have studied melanized moths, we have studied um, um, anatomical structure of the forelimb of human, a cheetah, a bat, a whale, we have studied plants, tendrils and thorns giving us another example for um, divergent evolution. We also have studied bird, uh, wings of birds, butterflies, bats and all everything. These are all higher organisms. Now I am asking a question. Do you think the same rule like this of evolution applies on a unicellular organism as well? Because if it does, then we can say that basically biological evolution is same. But my question is, do you think all organisms evolve using the same mechanism of natural selection? Can you think, do you think natural selection works with bacteria as well? Yes, no? What, are, what is your thought process? Just say something, right? It's, it's something you should, you, I'm just giving you a question to think. I feel yes, but not completely, sir. Like, if you say a bacteria which lives mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. in a salt water lake, or a, maybe uh -huh. better say, or better say, in a river, right? And then, right. yeah, then it transfers to a salt water, uh, water play, uh, sea something. And right. then you say you survive there. The fittest right. of them survives, and the weak of them die. So it, it, this is a, this, this your this example actually supports uh, natural selection, doesn't it? Right, right. But what so some, what do you think? Why are, why do you think? Yeah, yes. Yeah. What is the other side of the picture? That's what sometimes, I'm not completely sure about. Yeah. So you're more yeah. sure sure about the yes part, but you also have a gray zone for no, which is a brilliant situation to be in as a student. Yes. What is the no part? Right. I'm more interested in that. Yeah, the no part is like. Um, um, it's hard to put into words, but I don't know, like um, the bacteria. See, example, see, so the, so, uh, all of you hesitate regarding this. Okay. Just let me ensure you the good part of being on this side of the table, like being me or being the teacher is that I have been through what you are currently in. Right. So even if you will try, I will understand what are you trying to try. Make sense. Right. Sir. Right. Sir. Yes. So don't hesitate. It's not like I have not been through that phase of confusion and unable to put words to my thoughts and unable to give the correct answer in a correct manner in the class. I have been through all of that. Okay. So it's a journey. I have also evolved through academic selection. Okay. So you all are going through academic selection right now or educational selection. So don't worry. Just consider me a few years more evolved in the field. So I'll know what you are trying to say. So just don't hesitate. Just use any words and say. No, right, sir. Yeah. But most of the time what happens is like if we use pesticides or uh, insecticides on a large scale of a field, 
all the uh-huh. bacteria died probably right yes yeah. so yes. you think this is and a no part uh, yeah and most of the bacteria don't survive then okay. how yeah so there's no how can you say that yeah there's yeah, no fit right. yeah right correct you put it in so good words i think not just me everyone understood this right and yes. some of some of your batchmates are also ready with a rebuttal i can sense that in the air anyone who would like to just tell sahel that what you are thinking for the no part is is disprovable so sahel says that when you use pesticides or insecticides or antibiotics all the population wipes out is it true need not be no matthew no fatima just who said no the very firm tone of no sorry since because your videos are not on so when you say yes or no i just i can i just have to rely on my memory your voice memories otherwise what happens whoever says yes or no the video that person's video shows up okay so who said no i think matthew said no along with matthew no sir i said need not need not okay fatima said no yes fatima you were more stronger and firm tell me tell sahel what what's your answer it's not it's not necessarily that all the population might be wiped out because of the pesticide there can be one, uh, some of them which you know um get resistant which? to the pesticide exactly so sel if what you said would have been true the world would the world would have been a happier place for scientists and doctors you know the kind of every infectious disease or every bacterial infection let's say let's take an example of bacteria here because we have been fighting with bacterias for a very long time now earlier when antibiotics were discovered just one drop of antibiotic could wipe out the entire bacteria on that whole table for that matter but now we have something called multi drug resistant bacteria have you heard of this drug resistant bacteria not just yes, drug sorry. resistant multi drug resistant they are called mdr strains so mdr bacteria strains have become a problem globally for all the hospitals because what how do they evolve is you need to expose a bacteria enough to kill a bacteria nothing is a instant poison in nature do you understand that sel there is no concept yes. of an ideal instant poison if ever, anything is a chemical there has to be a dose that needs to go in so that you kill that bacteria suppose you uh, and the way we are uh, the way we are misusing antibiotics is when we go to a doctor and a doctor prescribes us antibiotics let's say it's a seven day dose but the moment you start feeling good on the third or the fourth day you don't take the antibiotics after that do you yeah. right sir we but supposed is, to. yeah we are supposed to complete Because that the, you might feel like you're okay but then might be just like the bacteria game yes the moment your body takes over the bacterial population you feel okay that's the beauty of the body body feels okay and bad very very uh, fast you know you the moment you feel that bacterial population has overtaken the body the body will just go in a state of chaos and panic and you will like i have to go to the emergency of the hospital the opposite the recovery is also very fast you are on bed maybe unconscious for two days third day you become conscious and your body starts feeling oh i am i am very well now the recovery is fast but doctor say relax rest sometimes it happens no when you wake up and you start moving doctor say take it easy be slow in the beginning your body you you feel like your body has recovered but infection has not totally left your body but this is what we do a mistake and we have been doing it from last 30 40 years all of us collectively even our parents and grandparents the moment we feel that we are okay we stop the medication on our own and we think that our oh, doctor just wanted to sell seven tablets so he gave a one week medication and i got better in third day it's something miraculous in my body my body is very good so i will what's the point of taking four extra days of medicine that's where we we should know that the doctor is actually informed and educated for five years about this so if he's saying that take these medicines for three days you have to take it for three days even if you feel good because that is to cut to complete the dosage and eliminate 
the maximum amount of pathogens possible from your body so that there is no rebound. But what happens? We expose our bacteria, but we do not expose them enough so that all are wiped and few survives, but they survive with a memory. They survive after an encounter. So if you capture enemies, show them your base um, uh, operation base camp, and then somehow those enemies escape. Aren't you more, more vulnerable now? Yeah. Yes, sir. That's exactly what happens. So you expose the bacteria to antibiotics, but did not expose them enough so that they are killed. So they now know next time we have to do something. They have this one weapon called antibiotic, which comes and like, suppose let's say um, your few of your enemies knew or got to know that what you will do to them once you capture them. So what you will do is uh, you will start hitting them on the head. So from next time onwards, just a hypothetical funny situation, from next time onward, they will come with a steel helmet on, right? Yeah. Yes. Or if your enemies know that you have fire archers, from next time they will come something with a shield, so fire cannot affect them, right? They will not have mast on their sails. Yes. You understand? Yeah. So these are the strategies. So this is what happens in nature. So bacteria also evolved over time. And got selected in nature for certain things. So those who were better off to deal with antibiotics got selected, other died. So it does apply. It does hold true for all organisms regardless. Even bacteria undergo natural selection. Is it clear? And not only in terms of antibiotics because this is what we are doing to the bacteria. Sometimes bacteria also, like Sahel started with saying that there are some extremophiles, some bacteria which live in... Uh, hot geysers or they live in very acidic environment or they live in very salty environments and they, they do very well. They are called uh, acidophile bacteria. Phile means loving. Thermophile bacteria, thermophilus, they love temperature. And then there are, um, um, there are some are called halophiles, which are salt loving. They can live in extreme salty water. So they also evolved like that only through natural selection. So there was a common neutral population environment changed to more and more acidic most of them died but few who could tolerate survived and give progenies then their pro progenies could, to could tolerate better they survived another died over the time only that population will grow which can survive in acid do you understand so, yes well, yes sir, so I was asking like do bacteria have a faster rate of evolution than the other? I was coming to that point. That, that's the next question I'm asking. So um, I'll start with you only. So we, we uh, are we all on the same page that natural selection holds true even for unicellular or multicellular, every life living system regardless? Are we on the same page? Yes. So let's first write this down, write down. Evolution by natural selection holds true. Evolution by natural selection holds true for all living systems, for all living systems in nature. Whether they are Unicellular organisms or multicellular organisms? Whether they are unicellular organisms or multicellular organisms? Now, let me give you a better example, but uh, let me ask you because we have less time. So, antibiotics is an, is an example which can be given now like after 1930s the first antibiotic which came came around 1940 um, um, sorry before the second world war before 1940 so kind of it's it's not more than 100 years we have antibiotics with us but what about the first life when the first unicellular cell evolved they were not subjected to antibiotics so what was their their uh, natural selection based on any idea? It must be based on something very, very fundamental, right? Something which every living system has. 
what are the characteristic properties of living system that you have studied in class 11th in the chapter life life processes when did you study life processes i think class 10th sixth sixth okay but biological yes, sir, in tenth, tenth, tenth. tenth okay so you studied some characteristic properties some life processes which are characteristic properties of life which only living system show and one of it which was very crucial you remember few names any word if you don't then you have to do some hard work remember metabolism metabolism Excellent. is a characteristic feature of living system non living systems do not metabolize correct so the earliest life that evolved must have been naturally must have undergone selection on the basis of metabolism right so as earth was changing the nutritional condition of earth was also changing sometime earth was neutral then became more or um, um, like then carbohydrates or these organic compounds in some kind of systems will uh, increase or decrease so those who are able to tolerate good in different metabolic state, uh, systems will be selected <clears throat> giving you an example i have taught all of you lac operon in bacteria remember prokaryotes polycystronic gene arrangement and i gave you an example of lac lac operon where under one single promoter there are three different genes encoded yes no yes, yes sir yes sir what was the function of lac operon all knowledge is connected i i will be using everything somewhere or the other in any chapter in evolution if you did not if you think that no knowledge from chapter of genetics can be used in evolution you are wrong what was the function of lac operon the name says lac where does the word lac comes from lactose lactose perfect so what was lac operon doing for the bacteria what were these genes doing there were three genes z y and a beta galactosidase trans acetylase and permease there were three genes right yes sir what were they doing combined in the bacteria they were helping bacteria metabolize lactose and produce energy from lactose right yes sir they were whenever they were creating lactose yes so whenever lactose is present and they are low on glucose so normally bacteria can just like us they can utilize glucose do glycolysis and produce energy but what if gl glucose is not present and you are short on glucose we do not have a lac operon so we might face problems if we are low on glucose we, that condition is called hypoglycemia and we our organs stop working when humans undergo hypoglycemia does not matter if you put fructose or lactose or whatever in the system if there is no glucose or if we cannot convert lactose to glucose our cells will not recognize it at all okay so it does not matter any other sugar sources there it has to be converted to glucose and put inside the cell to do glycolysis that's one disadvantage we are at but bacteria who have lac operon if there is no glucose and you put lactose then they will turn on their lac operon and they will start taking lactose in and with the help of beta galactosidase they will start breaking down galactose to produce energy make sense yes sir so that is a metabolic capability that they have an additional capability that will help them survive better and if a condition arise where there is low glucose and more lactose these bacteria with lac operon will be selected by nature yes or no yes sir and this is how they were selected at one point of time in the past logic pure simple logic so write down what was the last sentence you were writing can someone repeat the last sentence evolution by natural selection evolution by natural selection holds true for all living systems yes. in nature whether they are unicellular or multicellular yes and early the earliest organisms the earliest 
organisms must have been selected must have been selected on the basis of their metabolic capabilities must have been selected on the basis of their metabolic capabilities okay Is it clear, everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, the last part that we'll discuss today is: Do you think that the rate of evolution differs in organisms? What Arpit was saying. Do you think that some organisms evolve faster and some organisms evolve slower, or it will be same for all the life, regardless? So, natural selection works same for all living systems, regardless of their multicellular, unicellular does not matter. But what about the speed of this selection? what about the rate of this selection do you think this will also be constant across all organisms or this will vary it will vary it will vary yes correct it will vary but why it will vary yes, yes why why they have different what? metabolisms no metabolism has nothing to do with it what do we mean by different we don't have different metabolisms one glucose broken down into two pyruvate molecules to give two atps the time which is taken to do this is same in bacteria and in a human cell almost same but there is something which differs in a bacteria and a human what is that that Number is generation needed no that is just simple generation time a bacteria can give rise to the next generation in 20 minutes whereas a human how much time a human needs to give rise to a next generation at the earliest 13 to 15 years right before that yeah. it cannot reproduce and an elephant also take very long right so if i study if i take a bacteria and put it under a condition where it is challenged in nature and the uh, it requires 1000 generations to adapt completely those 1000 generations in a bacteria can reach in less than a few months right every 20 minute there is one generation 40 minutes two generation one hour three generation two hours six generations so six generations of bacteria can just occur in six two hours but six generations of human will need how many years even if everyone is reproducing at 15 years of age let's say 21 sorry 20 it's a neon 21 oh, no. Wait, wait, no, no, no. no no everyone has to reach 15 years yeah 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 has to reproduce so 16 to 15 yeah. at the earliest time saying because then they achieve reproductive maturity but that does not happen you have never seen a 15 year old boy as a father very rarely right yeah so it's clear right their generation time and in evolution happens through generational flow of information or variation so to pass on variation you need to make the next generation and to make the next generation you need to reproduce the rate of reproduction is very different in lower organisms and higher organisms therefore lower organisms evolve faster because they reproduce faster is it clear yes sir yes sir simple so i hope you will write down this answer on yourself can you write down this answer on yourself if not then i'll dictate it to you in the next class and in the next class i'll be doing a i'll be teaching a very important concept which is asked in entrance lot is hardy winberg equilibrium it requires some bit of maths so please don't miss it because we will be doing some questions based on hardy winberg equilibrium as well and then i'll come to human evolution okay after summarizing whatever we have studied till now so this chapter will take from the uh, chardy winberg equilibrium and uh, summary founder effect it will take one class and human evolution will take one class so human evolution and summary two more classes not more than that okay yes yeah. Okay so I'll see you everyone
see you all in the next okay. class